All right, well, Manny is here. He's mic'd up and he is back. He's been on the road. Let's see how many miles he has. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, 28,303. Hey, how's it going? My name is Alex and I just got this 2022 Chevy Silverado 3500 and here's why I hate the dang thing. First, with a face that only a mother could love. I have no idea what GM is thinking. Nothing is really new. This is now kind of an old design, so people have gotten used to how ugly it is. But by golly, that is not a good looking fascia. The list of things that I don't like will continue. But first, I want to talk about the buying process for this vehicle. It is right now 2022, and this is a 2022 truck. And it seems in the last two years, a lot has changed. First of which would be inventory selection. It's like there's literally so few trucks on the lots. It's ridiculous. And it, honestly, it seems like not just because there's few trucks, but it seems like there's only two types of trucks. You either got your work truck that you can scoop up and it has literally nothing, or you have a high trim. Like we're talking, what is on the uh, Denali? No, that's uh, that's GMC. Uh, what is it? High country. Literally, there's, there's ample options of high countries that are 90 grand, but there are no, you know, like middle of the road trucks. I, I don't understand. Second of which would be the pricing, okay? Uh, I guess it's now, in 2022, a good deal when you pay MSRP. It's like the world we live in today, good grief, right? I mean, come on, MSRP, and that is what I got this truck for. I did get an MSRP. This is my driver, Manny. He's gonna be hitting the road. On it and so we're gonna get his opinion on his first 10,000 miles or so here at the end of the video because he's out there running it hard right now so stay tuned for that but in the meantime we didn't obviously buy a cabin chassis that was prepped and ready to go we had to do a bunch of stuff to it first shout out to Wes Haney Chevrolet because they advertise right on their website no dealer fees no dealer markups so that's great and this it was an LT with convenience package so I think a decent screen and whatnot so really pumped that I was able to find this truck now how I could describe a Chevy that's like a mid-tier is basically like uh, half-ass everything. I don't want to say it, but literally this is how I could describe the Chevy is half-ass everything. So you got fog lights. These are nice. These are bright. These are LED. And so they're really good. But you got half of half of attempt for headlights. Then you got halogen bulbs. They're not very bright. Terrible actually, as a matter of fact. And I really wish they just included the nicer trim lights and not like I'm not gonna get the nicer trim truck to, as a work truck that's ridiculous but I, I do feel like at this point in 2022 like all vehicles should have nice headlights so people can see I don't I still it still blows my mind that like halogen is still the standard basically all right moving on inside of the truck let's talk about another half-hearted approach there's automatic windows obviously that's nothing new and the problem is on a mid trim they put automatic down on your driver's side, which obviously makes sense. They put automatic up on the driver's side, which totally makes sense. The problem is they then put automatic down on the passenger side, but they did not put automatic up. How on earth does that make sense? You are literally making it inconvenient for your customers to own your trucks. This is ridiculous. Another problem is this seat. It's really difficult to remove, way worse than the Ram or the Ford. And why I say that is because the bottom has to be taken out separately of the top. The top is bolted to the back wall, right? So you gotta uh, remove your bottom seat with your five bolts on the, on the bottom, that's normal. But then you have to, oh no, my light is blinking. But then you have to remove the four 10 mil bolts at the bottom of the backrest, and then you have to remove your um, headrest and you gotta remove the plastic things inside the headrest and only then you could lift it up. So it's much more challenging to remove the back seat in this truck. This is literally the worst drivetrain out of the big three, right? It has the terrible 10 speed transmission that we know fails at about 100,000 miles. It has the 6.6 .6 Durish Max, which is a joker of an engine, it has less torque, it has less pull rating, has less tow rating than a other truck. Honestly, if you're considering a Chevy, it's because you're a brand loyalist that doesn't actually understand how bad of a vehicle you're buying. So if you're gonna buy a Chevy for Hot Shot, like that's what you are, a brand loyalist not paying attention to other to the, how much better the competition is. Yeah, leave your comments below, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> Okay, so I'm editing this video and I just want to clarify a couple of things because I feel like I'm being a little bit harsh But anyways, the point remains the same is on a middle trim truck, right? Not the high not the super top of the line trucks or not the bare bones work trucks But on a middle trim truck on any brand you will have to make some trade-offs you there will be some corners cut 
to fit into that price point, right? And the frustrating part by far is you don't get to choose what those trade-offs are. You don't get to choose what corners you want the manufacturer to cut. That's the most frustrating part. And for example, like there's heated seats, I have fabric seats. I don't need heated on fabric. That makes no sense. So I would throw out the heated seats, but give me the automatic up and down on all my windows. Like, come on. Okay, second thing is like, there's these dials on the temperature settings. Do you think I care whether it says 69, 70, or 80? It doesn't matter. If I want it hot, I turn it to red. If I want it cold, I turn it to blue. That simple. But I would rather take a, I would much rather take a power outlet to plug in my computer because I do a lot of work on my computer versus these dials that tell me the exact, versus the digital screens that turn, tell me exactly what the temperature is. That temperature has no relevance to, like it's not real life, you know? It's not like just because you set it to 73, it actually blows 73. It doesn't, okay? So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I wish I could make the trade-offs and sometimes manufacturers make for sure in their middle trim, the incorrect trade-offs. Like all I want is power on board and good headlights with fabric seats. Can't be that hard, right? I did take those really terrible chrome wheel covers off, but I also debadged it. You can see there's no 3500. About this infotainment though, it's actually not that bad. I'm like genuinely impressed with it. The Apple CarPlay is phenomenal. Um, and like one feature that I can express to you for sure is awesome is when you unplug the Apple CarPlay, right? So here's your wire. When you unplug this from your phone, it doesn't switch to the other audio setting and just blast your music like on the RAM. On here, it actually just stops doing nothing. It doesn't play anything. So like, it's like I'm actually kind of impressed with the screen and you could say that yes, the screen is small relative to other screens. Yes, but if you get the big screen on the on the Rams, yeah, maybe compared to that one, it is small. However, this screen is very, very similar to size as the other medium sized screen. And uh, if it wasn't for the Fords, it's actually, um, if it wasn't for the Ford redesign, this screen is very similar to the Fords as well. So all things considered, not a terrible screen, um, but really uh, the Apple CarPlay just works phenomenal. On. I thought I would hate it much more than I currently do, but it's all dependent on how well this drivetrain will hold up because if this drivetrain is a disaster, like that's it, bro. You know, what I mean? like this is gonna be really interesting to see what happens. What is this? Look, it's damaged. You see the crooked lines? Yeah, no, that's why I said that was the turkey. Okay, so you hit a turkey? Yeah. Okay. He committed suicide <laughs> season. <laughs> okay, Manny, what's this damage? What is this? You see right here, I met a girl. Uh huh. Her first name was Light. Obviously, her last name was Pole. Yeah, right. Her, na her name was Light Pole. <laughs> yeah. Good. Nice. So while Manny was on the road, our fenders ended up coming off. They were. Um, I wanted to mount, mount them a certain way, and the way I chose to mount, mount them did not work very well. So, uh, no fenders on this truck for now. All right, Manny, so 28,000 miles, and almost 30,000 miles in the truck. What, what don't you like, okay? What, what don't you like about the truck? What don't I like? All right, let's start with the front side of the truck. Okay. All right, so first things first, the bump stop on these, on the suspension arms, because it's a torsion suspension the bump stop is pretty short so i don't know if you can Where get is, in there can i get in there oh yeah you goodness. can get in there you just got to get underneath it oh right here yeah so right that, there. So that bump stop so is, this is pretty your low bump stop and this is where it lands and you can see we don't have a trailer we don't have a load this is factory this is how it's basically riding on your bump stop all the time um that is uh not good i think <laughs> yeah so when you hit a bump it feels pretty bad all right now manny doesn't like the mirrors but you know i feel like mirrors are kind of almost personal preference you know some people like the dodge mirrors some people like the ford mirrors so whatever mirrors whatever that's a problem but talk to me about these issues you had shifting something was going on with the cruise control what was that so whenever it's got a load whenever it's like fully loaded uh -huh. on the trailer i noticed when it was climbing hills uh, specifically going up a hill once it got halfway into the hill it will go to sixth gear this is on cruise control so it would drop from 10th to it's sixth, sixth so okay. it can climb right and this is climbing so it's on cruise control so it's got the set speed okay but then out of nowhere midway into the hill it would skip seven eight nine then go straight to 10th and it would feel like the truck would shut off and you would have to be get back into it manually so you got to step on the pedal because it would feel like the truck would just shut off. So basically, and it doesn't matter what setting you're in, whether you're in regular mode or tow haul mode, all of these trucks, for the most part, are like tuned for fuel efficiency, right? That's the, that's the only thing manufacturers care about. Like, oh, look, at our truck is so fuel efficient. They don't actually care about um, like, hey, forget the MPG when we're in tow haul mode. We want to make sure this thing is 
pulling reliably and consistently. And so it doesn't matter actually what truck it is. On my first Dodge I had, it would do the same thing. It would go from fourth to sixth. It would skip fifth. Instead of going one gear up at a time when you're cresting the top of a hill, let's say, instead of going fourth, fifth, and then sixth, it just goes fourth to sixth. It does the same thing on the Ford too. Um, the Ford and the Chevys, they have that the transmission that was you know, it's a similar transmission, similar 10 speed, right? And so on the Ford, it did that as well. It would also be, you know, sixth is your one to one ratio on these 10 speeds. And so it will go from sixth to eighth or ninth, maybe even 10th right away, depending on how quickly you're cresting the top of a hill when you're climbing up a hill. So I've noticed that like on most Chevys, the seats are not very good too. Like this is just like the material itself, this foam, it kind of dips down below this plastic right here. You see, can you see, see how your seat cushion is below? And so what you may find yourself sitting on these Chevys is like on the plastic. And especially when you're getting in and out too, you'll be like, your leg will be going on this plastic. Like, hold on, like this, like when I sit right here and you're getting out this is this is what it looks like right so you're you know you swing out your legs and boom right here you're sitting on the plastic when you're getting out and so i don't know if they did that to prevent like premature wear on the plastic but or premature wear on the seat cushion you know because that's how you protect it but this uh i've noticed most chevys like the seats are not very comfortable surely it's not all that bad what do you like about it? What do I like about it? All right. So let's start right here because this is where the exhaust is, you know? Uh huh. So during the night, if you're gonna idle the Chevy, here's a tip for y'all. Uh, put it in neutral, put the parking brake. If not, the truck turns off and just park. But when you're idling throughout the night, it doesn't do the typical Ram stuff where it just I high idles all night. It tries to do a regen, but it fails miserably. So the Chevy, it actually does it the right way where it doesn't idle up throughout the night. It does the regen when you're uh, driving. So in the morning when you wake up and you get on the road, you'll see the whole exhaust and uh, DPF cleaning exhaust, all that come out and it'll come out as blue smoke. Obviously all of these new trucks have emissions and some of them handle the emissions better or worse. And the Ford Enterprise rentals that I've had, they do generally pretty well with emissions, but for some reason, these like 2021s, these fifth gen Dodges really are garbage with emissions. And the issue is that when you're idling your truck all night, you, it is for some reason, it doesn't go into regen when you're idling all night, right? Cause you're sleeping in your truck. You want the air conditioning or the heat depending on the outside temperature. And so you idle your truck all night when you're sleeping in it. And what happens is something doesn't properly do the regen, right? The regen is what cleans off your DPF so it doesn't get all clogged up. And every Dodge I've had from Enterprise, like I'm not, even, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, but literally every truck I've had from, uh, from Enterprise that was a Dodge, first 10 to 20,000 miles, could, always a check engine light, emissions problem, go see dealer. And so what Chevy I think did differently and, and, and maybe, maybe we should try it in the Dodge to put it in neutral too, see if that does anything. But so Chevy automatically shuts off your truck if, you're, if you idle more than an hour. So how you go around that is like Manny said, you put it in neutral, you put your parking brake on, and then it won't shut off the truck, right? It won't shut off your truck in neutral. But because he's in neutral idling all night, um, it doesn't go into high idle because he's neutral. But once you start driving, Chevy somehow programmed to do the regen while you're driving not while you're parked. And I think that's actually why like 30,000 miles, no emissions problems yet. Now we don't know about any other problems then maybe that may come down the road or we don't know what will happen later on. But, um, but so far it seems like first 30,000 miles, this does seem to be doing a little bit better than a Dodge. Now the plan with this truck is to keep it for about 60 to 80,000 miles, which is about how long I'm keeping my Enterprise rentals and then compare the cost really, cause that's gonna be interesting. Uh, but the thing is, I, the plan will be to put a flatbed on it. I don't know what kind. I would really want an aluminum flatbed, but aluminum flatbeds are insanely expensive. So we'll see, but so far right now that'll have to do. Um, so flatbed and we'll be getting rid of it. So this is really a short term truck. But 2022 Chevy Silverado so far, um, besides a check engine light that came on because of this connector, the DPF connect connector, um, because of the small check engine light and Manny just sprayed some WD-40 in there and it went away. So, but besides that, really the truck has been fine. We've just done oil changes and fuel filters. And that's generally what you do on a, on a newer truck. Um, but it's really the long-term ownership that where it starts to really, <laughs> really hurt you with downtime and repair costs. Uh, so that's why I have four trucks 
Three of them are Enterprise Rentals and the Chevy, obviously just for content, you could say. But uh, that's gonna do it for this one. And I'll see you in the next video.